All right. Good morning. Uh, so this was a long pending class, uh, which I wanted to take on the topic of exponents and logar logarithmics. See, the problem is uh, when you enter into class 11th, uh, the first problem you're up against is maths. Even if you're a neat student or a J student or a board student, all the categories have a problem that they don't know enough mathematics. I have created a playlist on my YouTube, which is uh, maths for physics students, very useful for students who are preparing for NEET, board examination or J mains. It will give you a very good start on mathematics on different topics which are used in physics. Now today's topic is log because I find most of the students are lagging in this area. They don't understand logs. Okay. And it's not a very hard topic to understand, but it's very useful. It's used in class 11 chemistry, it's used in maths, it's used in physics, all throughout your 11th and 12th standard, you will either do questions on logs, or you will use logs to solve problems of chemistry and physics. And so I thought this is a very good time when I clarify this uh, you know, topic for the students who are suffering because they don't understand mathematics, the basic maths is not clear to them. I think if, if you learn logs, you will feel more uh, confident, you will feel more encouraged uh, to do physics and chemistry, which becomes a nightmare when you don't uh, know about you know enough maths, which is required for solving the problems. So with that spirit, uh, you know, I have made this video lecture, uh, please do subscribe to my channel, you can see 2200 channels, uh, videos, I'm sorry, on my channel, uh, all free of cost available to you, you can subscribe to the channel right away. Okay, thank you very much for that. And I will start with my topic of the day. So you can see I've divided the board into two parts, right? So first part is your exponent, the second part is the logs. Okay, so I today's agenda is to talk less about exponents, and more about logs. Okay. And you can see the first topic we are going to go inside is the topic of exponents. Okay, let's start with this. See, Let's start with uh, some basic assumptions that A and B are two numbers which are uh, real numbers. When we do this, we are talking about real numbers, we are not talking about complex numbers. The N and M which I have used all throughout in exponents, this N and M are integers, Okay, just for uh, starters. Remember that the numbers which you see A, B being you know, in the different properties are real numbers and n and m are the integers. Now let's start with the first property. This is taught in lower classes, 8th, 9th, but as I think the time progresses, a lot of students tend to forget or some advanced concepts are missing. Okay, so let's see the first one. I hope this is clear. If the base is common, if the base is common, the powers get added. Example, if you have 2 raised to power 2, multiply by 2 raised to power 5, what will this be? The base is same, right? The base is same. It will be 2 raised to power 2 plus 5 is equal to 2 raised to power 7, right? This is taught in junior classes. This is a quick revision of the you know, maths you learned in junior classes and have forgotten and also will be used all throughout your physics, chemistry and maths next two years if you're in class 11th. If you're in class 12th, quick good revision for you. Let's talk about the second one. If you have a situation like your base, okay, now base is this raised to power 3 and this is raised to power 2. So 2 raised to power 3 raised to power 2 becomes 2 raised to power 3 into 2 is equal to 2 raised to power 6. So if you see two powers on a base, m and then m is raised to power n, immediately multiply the powers. Your life is simple, right? This is also taught in lower classes, but a quick revision for students on NEET, for example, who are, you know, who do silly mistakes when, you know, they, they are up against these problems. Let's talk about the third one. If you find two numbers and, you know, who are acting as base and there is a power, okay, you can separate out the numbers with the powers. For example, if you see 2 into 3 raised to power 5, right? Now you want to separate out 2, you can. You can write 2 raised to power 5 
multiply by 3 raised to power 5. So, you can separate out the base and put the appropriate power on it. Depends on what is the power given. So, you can see the power is common and therefore, I put the same power on the base. Okay. Just for your knowledge, in case you are not aware, if the number is a raised to power m, okay, a is the base, m is the power. Okay. So, when I am saying a is a base, now a is the base which is written down below here and raised to power 2 raised to power 3, 2 is the base raised to power, power is 3. Let's talk about the next one. Now, here you can see the base is same a raised to power m, a raised to power n. You can clearly see if the base is same and the powers are different and it's a case of division, it is the powers are subtracted. Example, remember a cannot be 0 because if a is 0, this will become undefined quantity. In the denominator, you cannot have a 0. So, let's talk about a raised to power. So, so let's say 2 raised to power 5 divided by 2 raised to power 6 is equal to 2 raised to power 5 minus 6 is equal to 2 raised to power minus 1. All of this is simple. If you know this, you can go ahead in the you know video and see the balance of the videos which starts from uh, the logs, okay, which is on the right hand side of the board for me. It's a right hand side and uh, you will find that interesting if you know this, right. If you're a neat student and a new 11th standard student, it's a very good revision for you. If you have been preparing for JE mains for long, you may not find this section to be very useful. But the next section is going to be of immense value. Even if you, you know, missed your class 11th uh, in depth and now you're struggling in class 11th, you will find this useful. All right, let's go to the next one. Now you can see the base, two bases are getting divided and are having the same power. If that is a scenario, nothing to worry you can independently put the powers on the base. For example, you're given 2 by 3 raised to power 5, right? So, 2 is being divided by 3. So, 2 third number is 2 by 3 and then there is a power raised to power 5, right? So, nothing to worry. You can straight away write it as 2 raised to power 5 divided by 3 raised to power 5. So, the bases can be separated if the power is same. The power is same. So, 2 raised to power 5 and 3 raised to power 5 separated out. Look at this. Now, this also to students is something new. When they go for entrance examination, they have no clue about these signs. But it's very important to learn these signs. This is not a, this is not difficult. It's just that you're not aware how to write what. Okay, let me give you an example. If I say 2 raised to power 1 by 7, okay. 2 raised to power 1 by 7. What's a good way to write this? Okay, so I'm going to write this as a sign which is uh, which says the base is inside which is a if you can see in the expression in the property but outside what i do is i write a 7 here okay i write a 7 here this is a way of writing the 1 7th which is a 7th root of 2 so if you have to find cube root of 2 what do you write you write 2 raised to power 1 by 3 if it's a 7th root you write 2 raised to power 1 by 7 right but what is that way they write an entrance examination sometimes. They may write this as, they may write 2 and outside 2 they may write a small 7. Okay, this is a small 7. So, this is a way to express exponents. Let's talk about uh, something very useful for you and again remember that when you are solving this, for example, this was a situation and this was a situation, b cannot be 0 in this. Okay, denominators if they also become 0, then what number is it, right? Number is undefined. You can't have 2 divided by 0 raised to power something. We have already started with the fact that, you know, A and B are two real numbers. But remember, real numbers, 0 is also a real number. But in the case of such expressions where you have division, A cannot be 0 or B cannot be 0. Okay, you can rewind and see what is that I'm referring to. I'm talking about this particular property and this particular property. All right, very useful concepts. You, you find this easy, but when you walk into an examination, you have to be very confident as to how to, you know, uh, tackle these. You will see certain situations and I've seen a lot of students doing the same mistake in the case of exponent, which is very simple, taught in probably class 7th, 8th or 9th. That's simple, but as, as it progresses, it does become complex and therefore it's important to, 
you know review this and do this again and again all right let's talk about uh, another concept which is some useful things you have to know about when why did we learn all of this is very simple if you don't know this you can't do logs you have to know this to know the logs very very important so these are interlinked like i exponents don't exist in isolation logs don't exist in both are correlated and linked to each other and that is why it is important that i'm although i said i will not cover exponent in detail but i'm just giving you some thought process on exponent so that you can acquire the level of confidence to do the log part which is slightly hard as compared to the exponents let's talk about some useful concepts on exponents if you talk about exponent any any base which is a uh, for example 2 7 9 any base raised to power 0 becomes 1 how so for example you take obviously the base cannot be 0 0 raised to power 0 is undefined we are talking about a being something which is defined 2 3 4 so let's write 2 raised to power 0 what is 2 raised to power 0 1 What is three raised to power zero? One. Okay. What is five raised to power zero? One. Any base raised to power zero becomes one. A lot of students in NEET and JE and board examination falter. They have no clue that if there is a number which is given to them, raised to power zero becomes one. They have no idea. Big blunder if you don't know this. So please ensure that you embrace this. You memorize this part. second important thing the confusion that comes in powers is something you know uh, which you have to be very careful of i have seen students committing blunder in this area and therefore i would request you to please ensure that you uh, you know you learn this properly so if you are given a situation where it is a base a number 2 raised to power 2 by 3 okay 2 raised to power 2 by 3 what is another way of writing this this is again an expression being written differently the way we wrote 2 raised to power 1 by 7 in a root kind of sign where i wanted to convey that you can write 2 raised to power 1 by 7 this way and also as something like a square root kind of sign it's the seventh root same thing is happening you can write a raised to power m by n in this manner so let's say you are given a situation where it is 2 raised to power 2 by 3 right this is straight forward right 2 raised to power 2 by 3 is well understood you you do understand but how about writing this in a different manner and saying i'm going to write this as 2 square and i'm going to write this and i'm going to write 3 okay don't be confused this is 2 square look at this a raised to power m and then the cube root so essentially it is 2 square the cube root of 2 square i hope this is clear you are writing a raised to power m by n a raised to power m and then the nth root of that so this is nth root this for example is the third root right it's a cubic root so look at this also you can reverse this also you can say i will not like to use m so you what is another way you can write this you can say this is 2 cube okay so this is uh, a which is the base base is 2 and this is now the n right which is n is what here n is 3 so i am doing a cube root of 2 i am doing a cube root of 2 and i am going to square it right so the whole squared got it just just something very similar what you have done here is this okay in my question it is 2 raised to power 2 by 3 what is my m my m is my m is 2 okay my m is 2 m is equal to 2 and what is my n equal to my n is equal to 3 got it so there are two ways you could write this up okay let me just i hope this is making sense to you please watch this again this should be clear in your mind as to how do you rewrite a particular when you have a base but the power is a you know a, a 
partial fraction, you know, 4 by 3. So, how do you rewrite that in, in a certain manner? That should be clear in your mind. So, this is another very important concept that you need to know. I will give you another example of uh, the same situation later. But for the time being, I, this is enough because I think we spend a lot of time on exponents. But go through this particularly clearly because this is where a lot of students are going to do mistake. Okay. So, you are going to take a raised to power m and then you are taking the nth root. This is one way. Second is you can take the nth root first. Take the nth root first, okay, because it is a raised to power 1 by m and then it is being multiplied. So, you can write this as a raised to power. For example, I am just re-explaining this, the second one. It is a raised to power 1 by n raised to power m. If it is a raised to power 1 by n, what is it? A, it is the nth root, right? So, this is the nth root and the nth root raised to power m. Same thing, right? This is the, unless you practice this, you won't be able to get it. We will do a practice session also on this class. But for the, for the time being, just focus on your concept building. Focus on the fact that, you know, you have to know some fundamental rules of exponents and also some important properties like 2 raised to power 0 is 1, 5 raised to power 0 is 1. A lot of students don't know this strangely. And of course, how do you rewrite the roots, okay? A a raised to power m by n is a raised to power m and nth root. The other is it is nth root raised to power m. One and the same thing. You, that clarity should be there in your mind when you solve. These simple tricks help you solve some problems. You will see as you progress in the preparation of JE mains or NEET or you know these examinations, especially which are more mathematical oriented, these are utilized somewhere or another. Let's come to the second part of the discussion, which is where I think our focus of the day is. I've spent enough time discussing exponents. I want to discuss logs in more detail. And here comes the part, which is, you know, what all the students have to focus on. Okay. Please go through this very carefully. I'm going to take each of the property rules and all of that. You can see I've divided into three parts. One is, of course, the you know, basics of log, the first part. The second part is a formula, which is uh, the change of base formula. The third part is some properties of log, which are very, very important, used regularly, very closely linked to what we learnt in exponents and side. And of course, some important uh, facts, which every student have to know. Every student is expected to know the fourth part also, right? So, we will go through each one of them. Let's start with the first one. Now, the first one is y is equal to log log of x. How do you read this? It's a log of x to the base a. Remember, you also learnt base here. But here, it was 2 raised to power 3. So, 2 became the base, 3 became the power. But in the case of logs, you don't have, you know, uh, that terminology. But of course, base is there. So, log of x to the base a, y is equal to log of x to the base a, only when x is equal to a raised to power a y. I will give you an example because you will see in integration, derivative, many places this rule being used. So, for example, I say, okay, y is equal to, y is equal to log of 5, 7, okay. This is the way I write this. So, I am writing log of 7 to the base 5, log of 7 to the base 5. When is this possible? When you have 7 is equal to 5 raised to power y. Just compare. It is log of x, it is log of 7. To the base a, to the base 5, right? y is common, right? y is 7, y is 7 in my question, right? Just do a comparison. And we know this expression is true only when x is equal to a raised to power y. And 7 is equal to 5 raised to power y is what we get from this condition. Okay. So, you should know how to use this, this particular expression and convert the expressions accordingly. So, if you, if you notice, this expression has no log in it now. I have converted it. You will see certain questions in integral calculus 
and many questions in physics and chemistry also where the similar properties may be used probably you're going to see this very soon as you start entering more you know mathematical chapters in class 11th and uh, class 12th physics and chemistry but in maths obviously you should know how do properties of log play out and and be you know obviously uh, get used in chemistry and physics so let's talk about 7 is equal to so this is one example i will give another example of say if you're given you know uh, 5 is equal to log of uh, some number uh, say uh, log of 3 and this is to the base a and you, you are asked to rewrite this this type of so this is log of 3 to some base right there is a log table also which i will tell you how to use a log table log tables are used to find values of large numbers in a simple form okay so so very large number is given you want to find some very big calculation a lot of large numbers being multiplied and divide we use log to calculate the values there is a log table available we see the number in a certain manner from the table use those short forms and get the answer it's called anti log and log we will learn that but for, for the timing let's only focus on the properties of log which are more algebraic in nature okay all right so let's come back so this is an expression 5 is equal to log a log of 3 to the base a we have to rewrite this expression in a certain manner okay now I'm, I'm going to rewrite this just observe me and i'm going to use this concept so it is it is log of x and i have to write x right so this is log of 3 so this is 3 is equal to the base becomes the base here again so this is the right the base is a and then see there is a power also there is a base and a power so you had a log expression which have converted into exponent the log has been converted Lo logs are also exponents we can say that you had a logarithmic function i have converted into exponential format so so raised to power 5 right this is the base base and this became the power so this is going to become the power this becomes the power this becomes the base of the exponent look at this exponent this is, a, is an exponent right so you can convert a logarithmic expression into exponent that's the essence of learning log conversion i have a log i will convert it into exponent so logs are exponents hidden form of exponents let's talk about uh, uh, okay remember one thing when we do this the base of a log is always positive you can't have a situation of log of 3 to the base minus 2 base cannot be minus 2 base has to be greater than 0 always let's move into another confusion which i see normally in students so in books you will find log x and there is ln x right this is another common confusion students have the ln x is also a log it's called natural log log x generally refers to log of x to the base 10 when the base is 10 which means if you convert it into exponent the answers you will get is 10 raised to power something with the logic we have just learned if the base is 10 of the log and i want to convert this into exponent you will get an answer which is 10 raised to power something if you're dealing with natural log which is ln so ln is ln the base is e so if i write ln i am saying my base is e we don't show this journey okay it is well understood it's a scientific way of writing uh, equations generally you will find for example in thermodynamics when you do calculations of work done or you do the chapter of chemical kinetics and equilibrium you will see natural log being used and the conversion is there 2.303 right that is what i'm explaining right now so if you have log of uh, ln ln x written you are referring to natural log which means the base is e and the conversion is this okay 2.303 into log of the same number but to the so you have converted the base from exponential to 10 this is called as natural log of x natural log of x okay I have also written one number by the way so i hope this confusion is gone if you see log it is to the base 10 if you see ln x 
which is what you see generally, it is log to the base e. The conversion is this. Okay, if you want to convert, just multiply the log uh, of the x with the base e can be written as 2.30 times the log of the same number to the base 10, which is what I have written. Let's talk about the next concept. I have written a number here, okay. A lot of students do ask me, sir, what is the meaning of the word e? What is this e? e is essentially some irrational number and is given by this. We are not getting into what is e uh, per se as in, you know, going deep inside what is the meaning of the word e, but we do know e is an irrational number and it continues, right? So, it's 2.718. That's a number e of tremendous significance. It has some value and therefore, it is used extensively in science, engineering and all these topics, okay? Let's come to the next one. Again, if you're given ln y, which is log of y to the base e, not to the base 10 because I'm using ln, then using my knowledge that log can be converted into exponent, I have made this because I know here the base is e. So, e raised to power y is equal to x. Students have to know this to be able to solve problems in chemistry also. You cannot solve physics problem, maths problem. If you don't know these log rules, you have to understand them. So, log y is equal to x implies e raised to power y is equal to x. Very, very important. Now, another important formula which is used extensively. And, and remember, I have just talked about this formula, the change of base formula. So, I had told you that log, natural log is to the base e can be converted into a log of x to the base 10 with the help of 2.303. It's a, it's a spontaneous conversion you do all throughout the day when you're dealing with physics and chemistry and, you know, maths numericals. Now, th but there is another formula associated with this, which is change of base formula. Now, the change of base formula says if you're calculating log of a, okay, and the log is being calculated using another base, log of A to base B, okay, that's your B. But you want to have the same base. What you do is, when I say same base, I'll just explain you. You can rewrite this as, you know, this is a natural log, okay. When I say log and I and I show you ln, I mean natural log. Don't assume that when I mean, whenever I say log, it means log the base 10. I'm showing you natural log. I don't have to say natural log. I will just say log. Log of A to the base B can be written as log of A divided by log of B. Both now are to the same base. Okay. Let's take an example of this. So, let's say you have log ln, which is a natural log again, of some number uh, 3 to the base 2. Right. This is... Uh, now, what happens when you try to solve these questions, they become very cumbersome. So, the aim always is to convert logs into exponents like we did in the first part. Logs also need to be converted into numbers which have same base. So, let's say I will convert this to log of 3, log of 2. Now, both have the base as e. I can also write this as uh, log of 3, log of Okay, now the base is 10. That is allowed. You can convert them, but it, a lot of stuff then depends on what is written on the left hand side because I had log, natural log being written on the left hand side, and therefore on the right hand side also I used natural log. Here I wrote it equal to log to the base 10 because I know the conversion 2.303 gets cancelled. So 2.303 and 2.303 cancels out. All right. So, this is one way of looking at it, right? This is called conversion. So, you can notice the conversion I have done, okay? Conversion is very, very important to you. Now, let's come to the properties. You might know about them, but let's revise them. L log of product of two numbers, x, y, is log x plus log y. So, you go to the log table. You can see the log of individual number. I told you, right? The use of log generally is... When you have very large numbers getting multiplied, it's very difficult to multiply them. Instead, what we do is we assume the product to be equal to some value. Take log of both the sides and log, wherever we see the product, we use this. 
log of x plus log of y and we also uh, then you know we have a log table we see mantissa and all of that i will teach you how to use a log table but for the time being log of two products you know oh, sorry a product is the sum of logs so log x plus log y log of x y is equal to log x plus log y okay second log of division which is x by y is equal to log of x minus log y log of x raised to power y so you're doing log of x raised to power y i will give you example of these in a while so log of x raised to power y the y comes here okay so this becomes y log x let's take the example so let's say we are calculating log of 2 raised to power 3 okay you can bring this 3 here okay and this will become 3 log 2 okay so you can convert very complicated looking log functions into a very simple function which for example you can differentiate you can easily calculate you can multiply you can integrate the idea is simplicity why do we use this we're trying to make our life simple we're trying to solve our questions in a very elegant manner otherwise just using a log table will become the only option but properties make our life simple we're able to eliminate a lot of complexity associated with log logs and you know the, the questions we try to do let's talk about the next one so this is right this is interesting so this is log of e raised to power x okay so log is to the base e already remember log ln ln is anyway to the base so if you see a situation where you find log of a and this is a raised to power x okay something very similar right the base is e the base is e the exponent is also e raised to power right the base is e base of the exponent so the exponent is this part right the base of the log is also e both are e and therefore the number becomes x look at this the base of exponent is a so it's a raised to power x and the base of the log is also a so a and a get cancelled and therefore you're left with only x very very important very important rule for you to be able to solve questions on derivative and integration and many other topics in physics and chemistry you have to know how to handle these you know when you, when the base is same what do you do with the power because what they do in questions is they put put across the questions which are not easily you know decodable let me put it this way you won't be able to see what to do unless you know these properties once you know these properties the whole question will become very simple and i will show you very shortly an integration question if you're in class 12 you know what, what exactly happens what type of questions can you know be asked you can see my playlist on integration i've done special uh, i think one of the videos i've done is the integration uh, with the trigonometry or integration with the logs right so integration questions that involve log how do you tackle them and this is the foundation stone for doing those questions all right let's talk about another one so this is log of uh, uh, right this is log e raised to power log x i'm sorry so i'll just remove this so this is another one this is e raised to power log x i'll just rewrite it for you okay so this is e raised to power log x ln x okay because we're dealing with natural log you can see e which is so this the, the whole thing is an exponent the base of the exponent is e right log x has its own base as e this whole thing becomes x e log x is x note this down very important e raised to power natural log x if it is exponent very similar right this instead of a we are using exponent so if you see a question in which you are asked to for example you know let's say you're asked to integrate e raised to power log x okay now e raised to power log x dx can be in, in you have no clue what to do right but if i tell you e raised to power log x and let me just rewrite it so that there is no confusion ln x it is ln x is x 
how simple is it right integral of x dx this is an example which i was telling you i will show you so simple right the e raised to power ln x becomes uh, x dx that simple let's come to the next one now so there are certain rules which every student is expected to know okay now the rule number one is the log of e to the base e is one for that matter log of a to the base a is one log of any number to the base as the same number is one e is very special because it is used in all scientific equations and therefore we tend to explain it with the help of e otherwise you nobody stopping you and saying that you can't use log of a to the base a is also one log of one is zero very important you may come across uh, you know some situation where you're integrating or you're solving some question minus log one log one don't have to worry it is zero let's move to log of a this i already told you but there is a condition a has to be positive we anyway can't have log of a negative number cannot i think we made a disclaimer here that uh, you know two real numbers a but in this particular case also you have similar conditions negative numbers log of a negative number does not exist okay just be very careful so another thing log of one log of one to any base is zero so if i say log of one is to any base is zero i have already done that for natural log right here the base a was equal to e i hope this is making sense to you all right i will now what i do is so th this takes care of all the rules i had to teach you from exponent and log perspective what i will do now is, is show you uh, once a simple numerical i am not sure whether you were able to see this properly but i will put it across to you i will rub this off and show you few questions where you can appreciate logs being used okay just give me one second and we will come back all right so what i've done is i have removed the exponent part and let's concentrate on the exponent part and see what are we referring to so so let's say you have to do e raised to power log x integrate right dx so one of the properties that we learned was that e raised to power log x and I will just rewrite it so that there is no confusion. I am referring to the natural log. The base is E. Okay, So this becomes X. Look how easy it is to solve something like this. Right? So damn simple to solve this. Let's say we have to do an integral. So let's say we are making sense to you. Please watch my series on integration with the logs. It will really help you understand how integration is done with the help of logs. Okay, practice logs, practice exponents. Your base of maths has to be very strong. I have a YouTube playlist. I told you mathematics for physics. Please go and watch it. It explains you vectors. It explains you trigonometry. It explains you all the basic stuff you can, right? And you will see a lot of practice also being done. I conduct live classes on YouTube. You and you, you are free to you know more more than welcome to watch even those classes they're available to you i'm covering the whole ncrt ncrt exemplar and many many useful things you will see uh, if you want to build a career in engineering a lot of engineering entrance exam type of questions are also done by me in those videos and classes some of them are live some are recorded like these thank you very much for your time i hope you enjoyed this video please give me your feedback on the topics you would uh, like me to cover i will keep on coming with these you know types of things which i see students struggling with especially the maths and then they're labeled that they're very bad students. They are not. They, they are, I think, good students who are struggling because they don't know enough of maths and they have lost interest in the studies itself. Okay. So thank you very much today. And I look forward to meet you very shortly. Thanks a lot.